Hey, what's up guys? I have eight mesh Wi-Fi 60 systems here, ranging from $279 in the US all the way to $1,099. Now, these are all from different brands and they are the best as of now that each brand makes. So for example, this is the best mesh system that Eero currently makes, which is the Pro 6E. And the same is true again for the rest of these. Now, I will be comparing their specs. I've done a whole bunch of speed tests and wired and wireless backhaul and range test. So we'll compare all those numbers. And at the end, I will pick an overall winner. So I quickly want to explain three key concepts. So when we talk about my test, everything will make sense. Number one is what is a mesh Wi-Fi? Well, a mesh Wi-Fi is when you have two or more devices where at least one of them is a router that work together to increase your Wi-Fi coverage, your network coverage throughout your home. And they're designed to replace your existing router. So basically the advantage of a mesh Wi-Fi is to get rid of Wi-Fi dead zones throughout your home. Number two is what is wired backhaul, otherwise known as Ethernet backhaul? Well, wired backhaul literally just means that these two are connected to each other via Ethernet. And what that does is it ensures that the secondary one is also getting really good speeds. And But because it's not always convenient to have wired backhaul, they also have wireless backhaul, which basically means that this guy wirelessly talks to the router and also increases your Wi-Fi coverage. However, because this is wirelessly talking, typically speaking, not always the case, but typically speaking, it's not quite as fast as if you were to hook up an ethernet cable. Now, during my speed tests and everything, when I say wired and wireless backhaul, I'm actually doing the speed test from the secondary devices to the main one. And I've done a, a video on how I do all of this in great detail, so links down below if you guys are interested. Let's continue with the review. Now my testing devices for Wi-Fi 6 were my iPhone 13 Pro Max and iPhone 14 Pro Max. And for Wi-Fi 6E devices, it was my Pixel 7 Pro, Galaxy S23 Ultra, and also my older Galaxy S22 Ultra, all of which gave very similar speeds. Starting with the Wise Mesh Router Pro, both of these are identical, so we'll talk about one of them. We have a reset, a power switch, USB, and we have two ports that are auto sensing. One of them is 2.5 gigabits and the other one is a gigabit port. And we have the power cable right here, which is 100 to 240 volts. Next up is the Google Nest Wi-Fi Pro. Now both of these are identical. So we have two ports. They are dedicated ports, which means the modem has to connect here, your internet source basically, or your WAN. And this is where it comes out of if you want to connect other stuff. And we have our power plug here. These ports are gigabit ports. And this is what the power plug looks like. 100 to 240 volts. Next, we have the Dynalink DLWME38. Now, both of these are also identical. In fact, they're all identical except the Orbi. The Orbi is the only one where it's not identical. So we have a WPS button, we have two ports, they are gigabit ports and they are dedicated. We have a factory reset and we have a power switch. And this is what the power plug looks like. It is 100 to 240 volts. Then we have the Eero Pro 6C. We have two auto sensing ports. One of them is a 2.5 gigabit port. The other one is a gigabit port with a USB-C power. And they do want you using their dedicated power that comes with it. It is 100 to 240 volts. And it is pretty similar in size to the Wise. The Wise is a tad bit larger, but it's pretty much pretty similar in size, generally speaking. Next up, we have the TP-Link Deco XC200. It says TP-Link on the side. We have three ports. Two of them are gigabit ports, and the other one is a whopping 10 gigabit port crazy fast as Deco 6E and the power if you guys are wondering goes on from the side and there is a little slit here so it goes through that so pretty nice overall it is 100 to 240 volts and this is what the plug looks like then we have the Asus ET12 Pro which is my favorite design from all the mesh systems here it looks like a skyscraper which looks awesome when it turns on there are some uh, logos and stuff that go on right here. Some light goes up on the top too as well. Luminate the Asus sign. And for the ports, we have four of them. We have two that are gigabit ports and then we have two that are 2.5 gigabit ports, which is amazing if you're planning on running wired backhaul for something faster than gigabit, up to 2.5 gigabits. We have the WPS button, a reset. We have on and off and we have the power. So. It's pretty awesome and this is the power plug for it. It is 100 to 240 volts in case you guys are wondering. Next we have the Linksys Atlas Max 6C. We have a USB port, we have four gigabit ports and we have a fast five gigabit internet port or WAN port and we have the power supply 
and we have some numbers on the bottom as well so a reset the WPS and an on and off and this is what the power plug looks like it is 100 to 240 volts and finally we have the most expensive Netgear Orbi RBKE 963 we have a whopping fast 10 gigabit ethernet port followed by 2.5 gigabit ethernet port followed by three other gigabit ports we have a factory reset right here and the power and this is for the router we have a sync button as well and the Orbi is the only one where you get one router and you get a satellite with it so the satellite doesn't have a WAN port because it doesn't need one and we have a 2.5 gigabit port here and we have three other gigabit ports and we have a power supply and reset this is the other one where you can run fast wired backhaul to the secondary one because of that 2.5 gigabit port so that's what it looks like pretty awesome and the power supply is 100 to 120 volts so depending on the region you get it I'm sure they'll probably send you the 240 volt version as well starting with the internet speed test now no matter how fast any of these mesh systems are when you're accessing the internet you are limited by your internet speeds for me that would be 940 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload now the router itself also needs to support those speeds so in my case all of them do so good to go there and when I'm hooked up via ethernet to any one of these I do get those speeds no problem However, the Wi-Fi devices are a different story and looking at the results, they some of them were better than others, but the overall winner went to the Dynalink actually, which was pretty awesome because it's on the more budget side. To find out the true performance of the mesh system, what we need to do is make a local speed test server. And again, I've made a video on this, so I'll put the links down below if you guys are interested in seeing that. So what that does is I basically make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer and that basically isolates it giving me the best possible speeds. Therefore I'm not relying on my internet service provider nor the public speed test server which can fluctuate at times. Now you guys could see a massive improvement across the board however you will see that the Deco XC200 is shining above the rest especially for the Wi-Fi 6E category crazy crazy fast and it's also true for the wireless backhaul as well so the Orbi is also pretty close to it and the Dynalink's not too bad either now for wired backhaul speeds you'll notice that the ASUS and the Orbi are taking the cake and the reason for this is they're the only two mesh systems in this group that have two fast ports so this makes a huge difference if you're going to run wired backhaul and your internet speeds are greater than gigabit then I would look at no other mesh systems other than those two. Jumping to range test. Now range will vary based on location. If you're between floors, if you have a lot of thick walls, if you're in a building with a lot of other routers around, all of this stuff can negatively impact your range. Now all of these were tested in the same place, so good to go there. And looking at the results, it is a clear winner that the ASUS ET12 Pro took the cake, went the furthest and had the best speeds. Now to set these up and configure them, you use their associated app. So it's available both on iOS and on Android. And all of these are pretty simple to set up. Now, some of these give you more options than others. So right off the bat, ASUS will give you the most number of options, especially if you go to its web interface. The Orbi and the Dynalink also give you more options if you go to its web interface. So it really just depends what you're looking for. Now, right off the bat, WISE is a pretty simplified interface, doesn't give you too many options. Neither does Google, neither does Eero. Dynalink is a very simplified app, however, the web interface, more options. Deco is a, I'd say medium, where you do get some customizations, but nowhere near ASUS level. ASUS, the app and the web interface give you a lot of options, especially the web. Linksys is not too bad either, some customizations not as much as ASUS and Orbi as well. Now one thing to note with the Dynalink, I did experience some app issues so hopefully it'll be fixed by the time you guys watch this video. Uh, but just as a heads up, when I was testing I would unplug the secondary one uh, to go between wired and wireless so I could do my testing, I'd plug it back in and the app would basically freeze. Which one do you guys think I'm gonna pick and which one would you guys pick? Leave it in the comment sections below, I'm, I'm curious to know. Right off the bat, before I tell you guys what I chose, I will say that all of these are good in different scenarios. So it really depends on your situation. So with that, let me say my top three is the Deco, the Asus, and the Orbi. 
So th did you guys choose either one of these? And my winner is going to be the Orbi. And, and it, it only won by very, very little. And the reason for that is because the Orbi is a quad band system. So that means if I have a lot of devices, it's gonna be less congested because there's an additional band. It has two fast ports, one of them being very fast. So if I'm running wired backhaul above gigabit speeds, it's good for that. It has amazing wireless backhaul speeds as well. It has very good range, not as good as Asus in terms of range, but very good overall. And just overall, it's a solid mesh system. Now, just because I picked Orbi doesn't necessarily mean it's the right option for you. It might be, it might not. So if someone were to come up to me and say, hey, I'm looking for a mesh system, which one should I get? I'm not gonna turn around and say, you should get the Orbi because it's the best. You know, I'm gonna ask a few questions, unless they're like on a Mr. B show that he has, he gave them three seconds to decide, and I'm like, you know, get the RB, you should be good to go. It's like a safe bet. But aside from that, I'm gonna ask some questions, and some are more important than others, and really the top two important other than budget is basically, are you running wired or wireless backhaul, and how fast are your internet speeds? Because right off the bat, if you're running wireless backhaul, I wouldn't recommend the Orbi unless you know you don't really care how much it costs because the Deco is very similar in performance to the Orbi in terms of wireless backhaul. So why would you pay extra if you could get similar performance out of this? And if you're running wired backhaul and you're faster than gigabit, why would you get the Deco when you can get the Asus that's gonna give you two fast ports on each and you can actually run it on this and the same is true for the Orbi. So it really just depends what situation you're in. And right off the bat, the safest thing is if you're under gigabits, gigabit speeds and under and you're running wired backhaul, you could pretty much pick any of these and you'll be good to go. Now all of them have you know a few different things here and there but you're safe with all of them. So really what you're paying more for is if you want better wireless backhaul speeds and if you want better range. So that's typically what you're paying more for. And just because you're paying more doesn't necessarily mean it's better. So let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. And as always, smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the support. Um, it's, honestly, without you guys, none of this would be possible. So thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button, it really helps out this video and with the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys have any questions or comments or have any suggestions, please leave them in the comment sections below. Thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic day.